Hello uh, guys, welcome to The Voice KE, my name is Colin Swangoi and today we are here at uh, the Arboretum Park so we are going to be discussing and having a discussion about human trafficking. Human trafficking is an issue that is bears and people don't talk about it. So uh, with here I have a government official, uh, with me I also have a, a representation from HART and also I have a survivor who are going to talk to us about now the human trafficking issue here in Kenya. Before now we start, yeah, Madam, uh, Miriam, isn't it? Winnie. Winnie. Winnie, I would love to know, yeah before we go along with even to the government yeah we like to know what what are the statistics right now of human trafficking where are we uh, as of today and right now as we speak today globally the estimates are at 50 million people mm -hmm. are being trafficked at any given time mm -hmm. but now looking into today being the international day for the girl child mm -hmm. looking into the children numbers is mm -hmm. at 12 million uh, so worldwide we have 12 million children who are under trafficking at the moment what causes human trafficking or what, what, what brings up human trafficking and uh and on that kind of side. We have different um, factors. Mm -hmm. So looking into one, first of all, looking at poverty, mm -hmm. inequalities, mm -hmm. cultural practices, are looking at child marriages and the, and the such. Mm -hmm. And I think also looking into different diseases. So there are many things that really contribute to us being able to have trafficking being on the rise. Mm -hmm. But first of all, looking at where we are at economically across the globe, it's very straining for many communities to even feed themselves three meals in a day. Mm -hmm. So you can't feed yourself. When you hear of an opportunity where you can actually make an income, Come or support your family, then you're keen on being able to take it up. But looking at child headed families, where do they go to? They have no one else to run to. So it means we have now also having children becoming uh, victims of child labor. We have children being forced uh, to work as people's domestic workers, being forced uh, into forced begging, working in people's farms. So looking into child trafficking, it's on the rise also for different reasons. Uh, you have talked about poverty, you have talked about hard economical times. It's something that we experience in Nairobi County, yeah, especially so much, yeah. And you have an official from the county government of Nairobi, yeah? Considering that Nairobi is a hub that uh, has all these contributing factors, yeah? What is the county government doing to ensure that now these cases are on the law and that uh, we have now low numbers of human trafficking? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Okay. Nairobi county government is a responsible government and we are working very hard with the responsible people, partners like Heart Kenya. We want to put programs in place so that we can reduce these numbers. We've talked about... Uh, uh, house of bureaus, we are going to look into that. We we'll look at uh, what we can do so that they can be regulated better and we can have more responsible people doing the business. Yeah, yeah we have heard that the county government is trying to regulate in so many years, but you have a victim here. Yeah, you are a victim of human trafficking. Yeah, what, how, how, how did it come along? Can you give us the experience? Yeah, how, how did it come along? First, something that makes us get trafficked yeah. mostly is unemployment here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So uh, if he is saying that they have uh, they are working to curb human trafficking, mm -hmm. first I would request mm -hmm. uh, it would be better if you give us uh, opportunities, at least make us uh, more exposed and uh, have job opportunities in the county, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to to ha to be independent by ourselves mm -hmm. without depending on someone, uh, because uh, lack of employment is what makes a lot of women and men. And, uh, go to seek for greener pastures in Gulf and other countries. Mm. Yeah. But you're, you're speaking about employment, sir, yeah? And I would love to get even your perspective from this, yeah? She's talking about employment, but human trafficking, is it a choice? Is it a choice? Well, I think when it comes to how adults end up being trafficked, uh, many means are utilized. We'll have false promises. People are being told, you're going to get a good job, a good opportunity, you're going to get good money. Yeah. Then upon arrival, things are turned against you. So you end up being forced to work, not being paid, your documents are being taken away. So people do not choose to be trafficked, but people are keen to be able to get opportunities for them to be able to take care of their livelihoods. And so how then they end up in this situation is most of the time people being lied to, being having people who try to process for them fraudulent documents. So we have people traveling with um, a tourist visas, instead of having work permits to let them even be able to work once they get to the destination countries. Those are traffic, being trafficked outside the country. So it's not an option. No one chooses to go and be abused. No one will choose to go and being killed. No one will choose that as an option for them to live this life. Everyone who is trying to look for these opportunities are looking into how can they better their lives through education, through employment, through marriage, many other good promises. But then it ends up being turned 
filed against them, mm-hmm. and then they are stuck in situations where they are not being exploited. Yeah, yes. she, she is talking about uh, unemployment, and you have seen that now trafficking is not a choice, yeah? But now, Nairobi people, they are not aware of these now opportunities and how they should get now a real uh, legit opportunities. Now you are, pro- you, you, you are promised a job, yeah? Yes. But the job, job doesn't come up, yeah? What are you doing to ensure that now you, you un- unwilling human trafficking through job opportunities and all that is not affected in the county and doesn't happen? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. As you are aware, uh, our governor uh, came into office with a manifesto uh-huh. that talks about dignity, mm-hmm. hope, uh, opportunity, mm-hmm. and order in the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of that, and trying to improve and create a city of dignity and order, as you have seen lately, uh, just the other day, we employed 2,500 uh, workers to do uh, to do to work in our streets, mm-hmm. cleaning and uh, and clogging the the drainages. Mm-hmm. So in the same vein, you can see Nairobi County is creating opportunities. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, we have a program in community development. We are offering to train people, young youngsters, uh, middle-aged, uh, aged people, so that they can be able to increase their chances of opportunities, not just getting jobs, but even doing business. We are trying to open up the space. That space has been uh, not much exploited. We want to exploit that. We want people to start being self-reliant. Uh, mm-hmm. And in that in that way, we are going to improve uh, livelihoods, uh, especially in the informal settlement. So we are having a lot of programs mm-hmm. on community development, training them, uh, upscaling their skills, trying to find markets for them. We have given them opportunities mm-hmm. to do exhibitions uh, in uh, open spaces within yeah. Nairobi yeah. without them paying a penny for it. Yeah. So they're able to get markets through that. Yeah, we have heard of opportunities. And as a survivor, definitely maybe after the, the ordeal, yeah, you survived and you came back. Yeah, Have you tried, and uh, because you have talked of a uh, job and employment, I feel like maybe yours was also as a, as a sort of job and employment and all that stuff. Right now that you have come back, yeah, first of all, tell us how did HART come through for you and be able to rescue you from human trafficking? Okay, after after I was rescued from, after I came back, I had uh, came and uh, uh, they took me as part of them. So first first thing when I came, I was not okay mentally. So that means I had to go for therapy first, and then after therapy, I was able to go to be part of their programs, uh, which started with uh, them provide base, providing basic needs for me. Uh, they rented a house for me and. Uh, made sure that I was in a safe space for to heal and then later on um, I was enrolled back to school so I went back to school uh, I did my course for nine months and uh, I was able I am actually graduating graduating this coming month and after the school also they made sure that they have also engaged us beyond provision uh, program that is uh, survivor leadership and other programs and so far so good we are the first group to form survivor advocates with hearts. Yeah. Yeah, after now this, yeah, you have been helped, you have gone to school, yeah. Now are you able to access these opportunities that we are hearing the county government is is offering? Have you been able to access them and what have you done now may be different? Now that I have heard that he said they have programs that they are they are giving opportunities to youths and young uh, people. And I came to clarify for us uh, which means they are using to engage us all. How how are they doing it? so that we can get enrolled to these programs because myself uh, I have not heard about I am not lying so I would like to know uh, which ways they are using to make sure that as survivors we are in okay not as uh, survivors only but generally youths and uh, others who are in unemployment that they are making sure that they will get into these programs I would like to know which yeah, before now the county government answers that you have heard what she has asked yeah? yes yes yes, yes before now we go to that, yeah. I would love to know, yeah. Do you think these opportunities is people they are not getting into people, or what do you think is the problem? Because now it feels like we have a disconnect between now these opportunities and the people. Do you feel like there is that disconnect? I don't think it's a disconnection. Mm-hmm. 
I think one of the things that we have to appreciate is that the fact that we have limited resources. Yeah. And we have, the, looking at the ratio, we have too many young people. Even some of them are graduates. They have their degrees, they have their master's level, but they still can't get jobs. I think it's really looking into beyond um, what is being made available by the county governments because, yes, 2,000 people, that is a, a good number. It's not, you can't say it's zero, but it's looking into how do we, what we were talking about, how do we make our, the environment to be really more enabling for everybody to really be able to flourish and do more within our countries. But also even if someone needs to migrate and do this outside the country, we're looking into how do we support this person, that they know where do I go to, how do I that then I, mig I safely migrate when, I, when I have to leave my country. So I think we all do our small thing wherever we are, but I think from the government level, is looking into how do we have enabling policies uh, so that we don't ma we make sure that it's really enabling for everyone to be able to thrive. Be it your business, be it employment, how are we making Making these available to as many people as possible. Yeah. We have had now coming now to our questions. Yeah, you, for you, you are saying opportunities are there. You understand? Yeah, and now strategies maybe are there, but now they are not getting uh, to the people. Where do you think there is that disconnect? Yeah, where do you think there is that now disconnect of now the government is trying to do what it's trying to do as much as possible, but now getting to the people now the challenge is there. What do you think is the disconnect? Thank you. Uh, I think uh, what she said uh, is true, yeah. and other same time, I would like to make people aware that uh, our jobs, we advertise them through our portal, which I can avail details to her in future that we advertise. Yes, yes, yes. Our uh, uh, public service portal, uh, I'll be able to give it out. But more importantly is that even when we advertise through that, there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of messages in social media uh, about jobs that have been advertised in Nairobi County, and all the details are there. We may we may have to make it a diff we may have to use more other channels to make it available to many people. But even when we use that, uh, when we need like 2,500 people, I can tell you more than 500,000 apply for the jobs. Even trying to get uh, to sieve through and shortlist people is not easy. So I think we have so many youths who are qualified and they should not just look for white collar jobs or office jobs. Let, let them think outside the box. We are training our youth on coding and many other things. We have our whole department that deals with youth and I'm encouraging them to come forward. Let them visit our offices in, a, in a City Hall and we are going to help them. Yes. Thank you so much for. So, okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, you said that uh, you partner with Heart, right? Or did I get it wrong? Yes. Uh, I can assure you, some of us, okay, some of us survivors, we are, we do not, we do not have uh, access to uh, maybe a smartphone or somewhere we can get uh, all the information that you said you put in your portal. Why don't you consider sometimes uh, advertising the jobs and the opportunities that you have with Heart, so that all with other organizations that have survivors or other youth, so that at least uh, they will, they will make sure that. Uh, everyone, every survivor that is in that um, uh, in their programs will be able to get these opportunities. Yeah. Why don't you consider that? Mm -hmm. Since you said you are partner, you are doing partnership with the uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, we can have thank you, thank you, together. thank you, thank you, Mercy, for that question. And I really emphasize with your situation what you went through. It is not right that any human being should go through uh, any experience of that nature. And uh, with Heart Kenya, we have just begun. This is our first program we are doing together. So for me, we can only expect it to get better and better. You can imagine what opportunities we are going to avail. We are going to bring in more partners. We are going to appeal to interested uh, partners on collaboration, those who want to sponsor programs, funding, and it might even go international, you never know. But the county government, <laughs> county government, no, we've just started and you can see how supportive we are. We have uh, closed streets in Nairobi just for this. You have seen we have brought our inspectorate uh, people. They were leading the way, opening the routes for us, stopping traffic. That shows a very good, and that is goodwill from the government. And she knows how we have cooperated. You ask her Kenya how we have cooperated. We've had meetings, try to put this partnership in place. I'm sure we are going to sign an MOU with them. That is the next phase. And then within that MOU, we are going to identify the neat gritties, what we are going to do. And it's going to be in paper. 
and uh, black and white so that going forward we know what we want to achieve what are the impacts for the people of Nairobi and we are going to conduct studies and research because we already have a fully pledged mm. a research department right now. Yeah. We are going to conduct research to know exactly what are the issues, what are the numbers, how do they look like, what are the interventions that we can put in place, and that is going to really yeah. help. No. So she's come, I think Heart Kenya yeah. has really come at the right time. Yeah. County government has also come at the right time. Yeah. Let us begin where we have started. Yeah. We, are, we are agreeing there has been a problem. Yeah. And we are agreeing, yes, this problem needs solutions. The solutions are going to come from me, they are going to come from Heart Kenya, they are going to come from victims, and they are going to come from many other people who want to help. Thank you. Now, final question as we close. I would like to know now, what is the future? What collaborations and what are you seeing between Heart Kenya and the county government? What is, does the future look like yeah. with human trafficking and the county government? Yeah. Yeah. I think this was a great start, and I think just being able to acknowledge um, the effort and the time that has been put to plan this, mm -hmm. and also them being present up until now it's we began this in the morning and we are here and so i think just being able to upload them for the commitment mm -hmm. and we are looking forward to being able to actualize looking into how do we create more awareness mm -hmm. how do we have proper systems when it comes to referring mm -hmm. cases of victims how do we offer support as well as this comes it comes in so looking into how do we connect because we do have a secretary that looks into matters of human trafficking how do we connect and continue doing more work mm -hmm. uh, in this space so as he's saying i think this is a great start mm -hmm. um and we are looking forward to being able to really look into what else we can be able to do more with support from other partners as well. Yeah, yes. close this for us, yeah, by telling us, uh, give an award of encouragement for somebody who is watching you and maybe has gone through the same ordeal and would love to get help. Give them your final advice and uh, talk to them and give them uh, contacts on where they can be able to get help. Okay, what I would like to tell uh, survivors or uh, victims that have not yet been uh, rescued or being engaged with the uh, Heart Kenya programs, mm -hmm. I'd like to tell them that they should feel free free that to talk about their experience it's not their fault that whatever happened happened in their lives uh, everyone can get trafficked and since we are not uh, telling people not to travel of course uh, people travel because of different reasons others they are in search of uh, green pastures other they want to feed their families to take care of their kids i would like to tell them uh, that uh, there are a lot of organizations one being hard that offers um, uh, knowledge about safe migration so before before someone uh, chooses to travel, uh, the person can just reach out to heart and know the do's and the don'ts when the person travels. And again, if the person was tra was trafficked and was rescued or is yet to be rescued, when you come back, don't be ashamed of talking about your experience. It's something that is normal. Uh, it's something that can happen to anyone. So I would really tell them to just talk it out freely so that they can get the help that they need. Yeah. yeah thank you so much. for. Uh, okay. Let me just close for you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to indicate something I forgot that uh, in the county government we have uh, a lot of support especially on traumatized people we have uh, people who can give psychosocial support we have a lot of uh, counselors anybody who is affected and those are the areas that we want to actualize with the heart kenya so that anybody who has gone through that experience and of course is, uh, is stressed up is uh, traumatized we can always reduce that level of trauma by counseling them putting them through the right uh, frame of mind all those things are available within ourselves and number two uh, we also face that problem in the county we have uh, taken children from the streets because we rescue children from the streets those who have been trafficked from other countries they don't even know exactly their country because they come here at a very at the age of six even if you try to trace a child who came from tanzania you can't be able to know exactly where they have come from and those children, we are just living with them. We are trying to, to protect them and uh, to make life continue for them, take them back to school. So as a county, there's something we are doing, but we also have limitation because across the borders, we need national government to come in. So I'm appealing to national government also. When we start doing this, we'll be talking, we're reaching out to them so that we can have programs that also have, uh, they, are, they are involved. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. I can hear you're being called over on the other side. Thank, Thank you so much Thank for you. talking That's to us. Team. Thank you so much. And if, as you have heard from the victims and uh, some of those participants, don't be afraid to talk about these issues. Don't be ashamed. It is not your fault. And that's from me here, uh, Shadow Collins Wangoi. Thank you and see you later. Thank you.